this is a tradition, certainly in the UK, but it, it's also a tradition that the Cubans have uh, fed for a, a long, long time, and that is that people really do age their cigars. Uh, collectors buy these limited and regional editions, and they'll stick them away for 5, 10, 15 years, and as the lucky people who did that to the uh, Flor de Cano, I mean, that ended up uh, being a pretty good return on investment uh, at 6,000 pounds a box. I have one of the original books. In. <laughs> See, <laughs> uh, it's something we've talked about with uh, the, all our uh, friends here in the uh, Dominican and Nicaraguan and uh, industry. It's, it, it, it's not something that most of you do, and I, you know, I've started doing it a little bit, but not in terms of boxes. I'll have, uh, you know, in my humidor at home, I have loose cigars that I'm keeping for a number of years, but it's just not our tradition, and I'm not sure if it will ever be any different, but the process or the system exists for people out there in the rest of the world uh, to actually do that. Uh, and I, I truly believe, and I've discovered this again and again with uh, a lot of the Dominican and Nicaraguan cigars that I have at home, some of them now, 10, 15 years old, they do change. And I, you know, actually they, they get better sometimes. Most of the time they do. Uh, even though I, the, the sort of axiom in our, on our side of the fence is cigars are ready to smoke when you buy them in the retail shop. And they are. There's no doubt about that. But the aging process that you can see with these kinds of high quality cigars it, it is a, it's a fun thing to do, and, and it, it's great to pick up a cigar that you bought 10 years ago and light it up and go, wow, that's, that's not the way I remember it. And that brings us to this stack of cigars. <laughs> Just a small stash. <laughs> I said to AJ that if uh, he had looked guilty in uh, customs the other day, he, he wouldn't be here this morning. <laughs> I'm not sure where he would be, but I uh, wouldn't be here. <coughs> uh, you know, if I had, when I was walking through that, I think I'd change my shirt three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you for taking the risk, because uh, just talk a bit about vintage cigars and I mean what they mean to you. And I mean, there are boxes here that are 60 years old. Right. right. Yeah. This is the vintage cigars. <coughs> it's a world of its on its own. It's a unique world, and this is what cigars will be like if you store correctly on a, on a, on a long-term basis. We in England store vintage cigars, well, me especially. Um, we have two humidors. We have a shop humidor that upstairs, and we have a private members and my stash downstairs. Um, what we do there, I, uh, my temperature is kept at 64, 65 degrees in humidity. Uh, and in temperature, I bring it down to 15, 16. So it's nice and cool, but it's dark. It's that was 15 or 16 centigrade. <laughs> yeah, don't throw them in your freezer, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps the aging potential. Cigars love to be in dark places. They just age tremendously. So if you keep it sealed, I've, what I've done here is I've bought a Monte Cristo number no. two from 2004, Monte Cristo downhill from the 1960s. Side by side, you can see obviously the, the different color the box has got as well. I'll ask uh, David to help me. Do you hold this? Oh, certainly. Hold Absolutely. This. <laughs> Do you hold this? Easy, AJ. <laughs> Obviously, Cuba has, oops, it's fallen off. Oh, the seal's fallen The seal's fallen off. So if I... These are fakes, I'm going to have to confiscate these. <laughs> <laughs> Cuba obviously has changed the warranty seal as well. Um, this is the government seal they used to put in all the boxes. So, I have got the original. It's similar basis, but much greener. And it's got a shredded edge, like a postage stamp. So these used to be in big books, they used to rip off. I put them on here. In the mid-60s, they changed the format to the lighter green, and to the current, which we see, are these. The reason they changed that is to help the, um, the fake market. Each one's got barcode, so everything's traced back. They know which distribution got it and where it ends up at. 
It also has a hologram on it yeah, now, too. It has a hologram. And we have all this on our website. For you, those of you purchasing Cubans, counterfeits are a huge problem. You want to be very aware of the proper seals to be on these boxes. So do your research. Yeah. Don't get burned. So even under the hood, David turns it upside down. There's been a change of format here. So here I have a pre embargo H. Umpman Dunhill selection, number 23. Now, it says here, made in Havana, Cuba, and it's indented really hard. This is a pre embargo box. Then they changed it to Echo in Cuba with a double line. I don't know if you can see this. If you look at the Echo in Cuba, it's got a, a large uh, line and a small line in the middle. And then they changed it to what we see now, the single line. So this is another way we date it. In the good old days, they used to put the box code. And it was the US that broke the coding system, which Havanas did not like at all. The cigar aficionado that actually did it. Oh, cigar aficionado. They, <laughs> they were not happy. They were not happy. So because the, the code was broken, what they did is this is when they decided to make it so we all understand it. But what they do not, they keep changing the factory codes on a regular basis. They want us and keep Cigar Schneider on their toes. But the month and the year, it's normal. April, 011, and so forth. They even started putting Habanos SA on top and Toti de Amar, totally handmade. Now, if we open both the boxes up, They've left, they've left the format the same. We can see the color difference, <clears throat> the darkness, the light. Now you can see the aging of, of, of the wrapper as well. Obviously, there's a shrinkage of the cigars compared to the both. What hunters do now is they put this white um, safeguard on top so it doesn't get damaged on shipping then to me and me to my customers. So it helps protect the damages as well. But vintage cigars, if you age it correctly, they just age well. When you smoke a young cigar, it's very, yeah, you can taste the ammonia in it. And as time, it disperses where the flavors come out. Monte Cristo number two, it has potential of decades, decades. Yeah, Monte, Monte two is one of the classic aging cigars. Absolutely. Aging Superb cigar to age. Full flavored cigar, big cigar. Yeah. Of which this is a very good example. You said this was from the mid 60s, right? Mid 60s, yeah. So it's not quite 50 years old. Uh, it's just incredible. It's full of flavor, it's uh, well balanced. I mean, it's a really great cigar. Yeah, and what happens with, uh, with uh, aging cigars is that all the flavors you can, you can taste, and especially if you have it as a first cigar in the morning, your palate's clean so you can taste them. All the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the creaminess, it's all in your palate. And I tell you what, when you smoke a vintage cigar, you do not want to smoke another cigar for quite a few hours because the flavor is in your mouth. It's having like a lovely chocolate. You just put it in your mouth, let it melt. It just melts away and just leaves a lovely taste on your palate. Now, AJ, a lot of wine collectors who, who buy by the case will, from time to time as the wine is aging, pull a bottle out to try it and see how it's evolving. Do you have any rule of thumb with your vintage cigars where you'll pull one out after X amount of time? Tell us what that X amount of time is before you'll give it a sample. Yeah, oh dear. Depending on your willpower, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if I have, depending on how many boxes I have set aside, um, if I've got two or three boxes in stock, I will get a box out and I'll try from that box throughout the year, or years, should I say, I'll try two cigars one year and then another two year after and so forth. So in that way, you know how the other boxes are aging. So it's a good way that you can say, if the cigars have got to the peak compared to the last, what you've smoked, you know that the stash you have, you have to start smoking them. Get your friends over and just enjoy and share. You know, if they've got, still got a lot of flavor, it's like what we smoked back in your office, the, yeah. the, uh, the punch, the Dunhill selection. It had so much spice to it still. I would say it had another 10, 15 years more to go. And this was a cabinet from the 1960s. Cigar was ridiculously strong for that. Yeah. Wasn't it just, it's phenomenal. Yeah.